It did, yes. So, it man, did. if you could articulate that, uh, uh, two fantastic uh, classic games, four to three, four to three. Right. Yeah, well, we're, we're playing Brenham, and uh, Brenham is a powerhouse, and they've always been there. And so when we got there, the odds makers did not give us much of a chance, uh, you know, and that's okay, you know, but you're, we're there. We've got a chance maybe. So we go forever. we got a great pitcher, and they have one too, and finally it got down. We hit one out. They didn't. We beat them four to three in eight innings. And this guy throws, I don't know how many throw it. That's back in the time when you didn't do it, you know. You had these little counters. When it got it up to a certain deal, I just zeroed it off. We started over again. <laughs> so that worked out. I mean, it was hell. It was warm. He was fine. You went out and asked him, what did he say? I'm good. That's all I wanted to hear. So anyway, we won that one. And the next day, we could, we're going to play Cal Allen. And Cal Allen was a phenomenally really good team. They've won, I think, seven state champions since that day. And anyway, the, we go play them. And golly, we got this guy pitching. He's another left-hander. And Sometimes he forgot to take his medicine. And when he forgot to take his medicine, things didn't work out real well for him. He said he felt normal, but he was not normal. And so we knew that he wasn't doing too well that day because his medicine wasn't there. So I talked to the players. and I said, we need to get this guy. What's the matter with him? Why won't he take his medicine? He said, well, he just he doesn't want to. So I said, we got to do it or we're going to be in trouble. He said, don't worry about it. So they got his snuff can. Now, that's back in the deal when everybody could dip. It was quite all right. You know, if you didn't do it, it wasn't against public school uh, oh, no, rules no, to have no. tobacco on campus. No, no. It was a pride deal if you had spit stains down your uniform. So it was a good thing. Maybe it on your shoes. Well, anyway, so they put all his medicine in his snuff can, and they walled it around. And so every inning, he would take a big dip and go out and pitch real well. When he got finished, I'd maybe throw that out and do another one. And it lasted exactly seven innings. And we had him going. And so then we called timeout, and we brought the other guy in. And uh, the, the guy that he was getting drafted by the Atlanta Braves, this guy, and I, I called him and I said, "Is it okay if he throws?" And he said, "I don't care." I said, "Well, then, he, the, you know, it's it's fine." And we warmed him up, and and he won, won for us. So he has eight innings, four to three, it's all good. But it's better medicine through better chemistry. That's a great story. Uh, like I said, we can't we can't quite do that today, or it, it might happen. You know. Uh, yeah. There's, hey, baseball people still like a, a nice dip or, or a chew every now and again. Well, sure they did. You know, it's it's uh, well, you know, it uh, takes a lot of a lot of worms and a lot of other things to get into the body. <laughs> it detoxes you, you know, so it kind of cleanses you out. It's kind of like a cheap colioscopy. It's <laughs> now, for the record, neither one of us are a doctor or play a doctor on TV. Right? No, we don't. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, sometimes coaches take on lots of different roles. You know, we've healed the sick. We've, we've done almost everything. I've taken confessions. I put a sheet up. I'd listen to them and I'd resolve them from their sins <laughs> and go on. Oh, know. that is great. Yeah. Uh, it looks like you've got your state championship ring and your Hall of Fame ring on. Is that correct, Coach? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's awesome. I know those are two are very proud uh, yeah. accomplishments that right. you've had in your uh, your career. What are some other things that stand out that uh, I know it's hard to really zero in on one or two, but some things over your uh 28-year high school career. We'll talk a little bit here in a yeah. minute about some things you did uh, at the private school and college. Well, you know, uh, high school was a wonderful thing, but in the summertime, we got involved in what we call the Sunbelt Classic. It was the best high school seniors you could get from 10 different states, Oklahoma, uh, Alabama, Georgia, California, uh, Maryland, Ohio, Oklahoma. We all met in Oklahoma, and we played there. And I was fortunate enough to coach there for about 20-something years. And we had some really good people. For example, one year we had Dennis Cook. He was one of our coaches. You know, he, he, he was a hawk. He, he pitched for the Atlanta, uh, you know, for the Angels. He's from Dripping Springs. And then next year we got Roger Mer uh, Roger uh, Clements. And that nice. was an interesting deal. That's back when Roger was pitching and whatever, and his son was playing. And it was really a good experience because – he, you know, he, he brought the whole package. He made everybody play better. And he had a work ethic. It was amazing. And he was, came was this in, when Roger had kind of gone through retirement and was still pitching no, a little better? No, this was before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's still in there. Got it. Yeah, he had a work. And so he would, uh, he, I think he was with the Yankees. So he just took a couple of days off to come be with us. And he, Roger was a really nice guy. He said, you know, your shoes are not very nice. I said, well, Roger, this is all we got. So the next day, we got better. And as he, and so... Anyway, he was, he truckload was, of new shoes and clean well, showed up. It could have been. And so he was very nice to us. He, he took good care of us. 
So the reason why I tell you this is because the state of Texas, we, we would gather up our best players, and the association here is the one that sponsored it, and we would go up there and play, and most of the time we were able to do very well. So that was a highlight. That's a great story. Um, after you uh, retired from yeah. the uh, Andrews School District, you uh, decided to move to the Dallas-Fort Worth area to be closer to family. That's correct. And uh, you take an assistant job at Dallas Jesuit. Uh, so you stayed in the coaching profession actually for uh, 12 more years, uh, six at Jesuit and then I think another six at West Texas A&M. That's right. So uh, obviously your passion for the game continued. You had an opportunity to instead of just retire and go fish, hunt, or play golf, you want to still be uh, on the field changing young men's lives. Yes, I, I always did. It was just It's just been something that uh, I've always wanted to do. I continue to do it. I'd like to do it today. Uh, I don't know that it's possible. You know, we see ourselves still able to do those things, but I, I've always enjoyed it. It's always been fun. The, the deal at Jesuit was a really a good time for me. It was a completely different uh, way of being. You know, they really are serious about their uh, – education there they're, they're things for ivy league schools so when i came there i gave them my transcript and it was loaded up with all biology chemistry and physics and all that so i said i'll be happy to coach you know do one of your science today they said that might be good for the state of texas but for the ivy league class it isn't so you can teach driver's ed wow and be a baseball coach and was I that said, a little eye-opening did you yeah before you started working there did you have any idea <laughs> no, it was, private school curriculum was was no i did quite a bit tougher a whole oh, nother level oh, maybe yeah. the oh i'll give you an example curriculum. okay so we're i'm teaching drivers in okay so i go in there and i get it my write my name on the board and i turn around and all these guys are standing up and so i'm not used to this they're standing up they're in their coat and ties and everything and i said uh we practicing for a fire drill they said, no, you're supposed to see this. I said, oh, okay, sit down. <laughs> and so, and so uh, I said, okay, I want you to take these eight, these 50 questions, and I want you to go home, and, and we'll report back. So, of course, when they come back, they got it all. They know all the book. And I got 33 more days with them. <laughs> so, so I finally figured out they don't what, know. What did you all do in your downtime for those 33 days? Well, we decided, that I said, okay, you, you're really good with book learning. Does anybody know what a carburetor looks like? Well, they didn't. So we did a lot of stuff on maintenance of cars, how to change oils, how to change the tires, how to do all this stuff, just pr- stuff they'd never knew because they didn't have to do it. Yeah, all their vehicles have been taken to the uh, service bay That's at correct. the yeah. Ford, Cadillac, mm-hmm. or Mercedes dealership. That's absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So they enjoyed it. They liked it. It was something that they enjoyed. And, you know, it was crazy. I mean, you know, the people there in, at that particular time, when you take motor vehicles, it's, they'll have all kinds of stuff. Driver's ed, beware, and all that stuff. Not that, not those guys. They may take them, take them all off of them. And they said, this will make them better drivers. So we had to drive 635, I-35, I-45, you know, all those things. And it was scary. Downtown Dallas, it was a, it was a, a awakening for a guy that lived out in West Texas and didn't know anything. It is it. tough to drive in major metropolitan areas if you're a small town, whether it's Kentucky, West mm-hmm. Texas, or Georgia. Uh, you, you rarely have to get on the interstate, but uh, in no. these me- major metropolitan areas, you got to hop on the interstate to, to go anywhere. Yeah, so I learned a lot from them. I enjoyed my time there. How about West Texas A&M? You jump up to the college game for a, a couple years. Uh, what's the, the contrast between working with uh, – the uh, 15 to 18 year old kid versus the say 18, 19 to 22 year old kids. Well, you could use a different vocabulary. You know, you could probably use <laughs> words that had more than one syllable. No, they're, they, they're, they, their attention spans better. They want to learn. You know, these other guys just thought they did. This is their profession. This is going to make them better. So, the attention, the focus, all that was much, much different. And I enjoyed it. It was fun. Had a good time with them. For the coaches that are listening, uh, or if you're hearing something that that you can share with another coach, tag them, share this podcast with them. But Coach Halsey, uh, what are two things you could share with uh, a coach that's only been in the business, say five years or less, that plans on making a you know a thirty plus year career out of the, the great profession of baseball? What are some things that you learned along the way that you can impart to that coach that's listening right now? Well, just know it's just it's not going to be an easy road. And that's okay. You, we don't expect it. That I tell you what, all that stuff you tell your kids about persevering and all that other stuff, it applies to you too. 
you've got to be able to do that. You've got to be able to adjust, and you got to be you got to like those guys. They're playing for you, and sometimes it's kind of like tough love. They don't like it either, but at the end we all decide. So my two points would be: know that it's going to be a hard road. Try to figure out and try to figure out a way to make it fun. And the people that you play against, you need to figure out a way to uh, help them because they'll help you. And because when it's all over with, you got players, but you got those coaches that you coach against. Those are your guys. Coach, you're still plugged in uh, maybe more than ever with your role with the Retired Coaches Alumni Association. It's, uh, to my knowledge, the only one uh, in the United States. Uh, you're partnering with the uh, Texas Coaches uh, Baseball Association and uh, you've got over 100 members currently. Is that correct? Yeah, we're, we're going to be approaching uh, 150, 170, you know, this year. And so the, what this group is, it was uh, designed by a friend of mine, and I got together, and he got real ill, and he was dying of cancer. And he said, I think this is a worthwhile project. I want you to do this, and I want you to promise me that you'll at least get it started. So I felt like a lonesome dove and Gus and all the group, and I needed to do it. So with the help of Rick Sanders... And the people in this association, they gave us a venue so we could be a part of this thing again, and it started. So what we do is we take the retired coaches, and we give them a chance to, you know, be young again, so to speak, and we meet three times a year. Today we're down in our convention. We had probably 67 of them there, and we had a wonderful time. We solved lots of problems. We said earlier, once you get down there in this environment, nobody's, nobody's mad at anybody anymore. They probably can't even remember the rules. But it's okay. No umpires are allowed. But the, <laughs> but the rest of it's good. We do lots of charitable things. Uh, we help people find jobs because of our inter- interconnection with that sort of thing. Because we know, here's a list of people. You want to go to this area of the deal? Call this coach. He's, he's lived there for 40 years. I bet he can help you for somebody. He knows somebody that can help you. And that's, that's been a helpful thing. And you're also doing a lot of charity work for the uh, Blind Umpires Association, is that right? Absolutely, yes. We we got canes. Fact is, we're going to try to get DBAT to make us some bass that have a cane to handle on the end of it and a rubber deal. We thought well, we could probably sell those to them. <laughs> uh, was there ever one time you, you got thrown out of a game uh, that you uh, were just, like, really hot about and uh, still m- maybe makes your blood boil to this day? You know, there was one time it was a. It, it, I, I didn't get thrown out very much because you knew kind of how far to push them, you know. I'll give you a real brief. This is the only reason why I got kicked out. I didn't think it was that bad. After I think you'll agree with this story. This umpire. It was a real hot afternoon. It was a regional playoff game, and I think he'd eaten some Mexican food before he went. So he came by me with doing the pigeon walk, you know, and I knew he had to go to the bathroom. So he said he'd be back in a little while. Well, he goes around the corner, and uh, there wasn't enough time, I don't think. And there were screams coming out of the bathroom. So I went in to help him, and it was a terrible sight. And so we got him all back together. He had some clothes in his car, and he put them back on or whatever. And so he came back, and the people applauded him, and the game got back on. Okay. So my catcher is, you know, catching the pitch, and we're ahead in the game. We're fixing to win this one. And so the ball is way outside, and he calls it a ball. Okay. The next one's right down the middle, and he calls it a he doesn't call it a strike. He calls it a ball. And I called my catcher. I said, Dad Gum, Elton, what kind of call was that? I said, crappy. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I'm, I'm going to kick the coach out because he probably told you that story. You're gone. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I said, hey, that's, that's, that's bad. I'm folks, just telling, folks, telling the truth. you can't make this up. Only, only in the baseball parks across uh, West Texas uh, can these stories be told, but they're great ones. Uh, Coach Joe Ray Halsey was in the house. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, sir. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Hey, everybody. My name is Kyle, and I'm the producer for Behind the Dish with John Piper. We put a lot of effort in here to bring you the topics and guests that we think are relevant to the sport of baseball and to your everyday life. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you on the next one.